Hi there, everyone. My name is Vic Beer. I'm an ENT surgeon, and I want to tell you about this project that I've been working on with Michael, one of my friends, who is a great sleep technician, probably one of the best I've ever met. And he and I have been sort of brainstorming ideas for this new thing. And we've done a lot of work on it, but I think another company has just come out with something similar. And I just thought to myself, I'm not sure whether it's worth pursuing because there's a lot of money. So I wanted to tell you all about it in this video and see sort of gauge reaction, see if it's worth me pursuing at all. Anyway, it's all about people with a low arousal threshold. And what that means is that it, it's very easy to be woken up at night. You're a very light sleeper. The smallest little noise will wake you up and wake you up with a start and you can't get back to sleep again very easily. So there's lots of people where this uh, can affect. It could affect simply, you know, mothers. Uh, women can have great sleep all their lives. They've had a baby. As soon as they had their baby, um, mothers' brains change, uh, you know, irreversibly, typically at that stage, because they can't sleep so deeply that they won't hear their baby crying anymore. So their brain changes so that they can wake up very easily and feed the baby or whatever the problem is. And unfortunately, that problem seems to stay with a lot of women for the, you know, their kids may be now applying for Oxford and they've left home and all that sort of stuff, but their mothers are still having the same problem where they wake up very easily in the middle of the night, not getting a full, deep, restful sleep and not getting the sort of the undisturbed sleep that they want. But it can also be other reasons as well. It could be that you have simple insomnia and insomnia is really bad for lots of people. And maybe you're trying to get to sleep at night and little things are bothering you like the, the clock, which is ticking away and, oh God, I can't sleep, it's annoying me. And, and the room's too hot or it's too cold and too many people are sort of driving outside. All those sorts of things can keep you up at night. And then if they get woken up in the middle of the night, they go, oh God, I've woken up. I'm never going to get to sleep. I'm never going to get to work. I'm going to be unproductive. I'm going to lose my job. I'm going to look tired all day. I'm going to look, I'm going to get old looking, all those sorts of things. These sorts of things run around people with insomnia's brains and they can't sleep and, they, and all those things come to pass. Another subset of people uh, are those people with possibly something like upper airway resistance syndrome where um, so there is a subgroup where people are falling asleep, their breath is becoming more and more shallow, and they're about to have an obstruction where they block off their breathing. But just before they absorb, start obstructing, they wake themselves up because even a slight change in their ability to breathe seems to wake them up very quickly and they never get into the point where they have obstructive sleep apnea, an apnea or a hypopnea, but they have all the symptoms because they keep waking up numerous times all through the night, which in some situations we call upper air resistance syndrome. And I've got videos about upper air resistance syndrome here. Um, so have a look at those videos if you're interested in that. But the idea is to try and reduce, not reduce, but a fixed low arousal threshold. Try and make things better for you. And Michael, who's a master at all these brain waves and sleep um, sleep study things, he's been looking at the sleep studies and he's picked out the different complexes, the K complex and other complexes in your brain that are meant to help you with your arousal threshold. And now these complexes are designed to keep you asleep when there's a noise outside. Uh, for example, if uh, if there was rain hitting your window or something like that, that rain should not wake you up. And there are complexes in your brain that stop you from waking up when a sort of a simple, organic, um, non-threatening uh, sound starts, um, because you become exposed to a non-threatening sound during sleep. So you shouldn't wake up if you hear a, a stream babbling near you, or you shouldn't wake up if there's wind noise outside, something like that because we all hear that in nature all the time. You've got to remember, you know, we're only just not cavemen anymore in terms of evolutionary standards. So our sleep is based on cavemen sleep. And so cavemen used to sleep, I guess, outdoors and heard wind noise or fire crackling and, um, you know, rain, uh, all these things that are meant to um, not interfere with your sleep. So these noises should not be waking up, but they seem to wake up some people because they have a low arousal threshold. And looking at these different types of complexes that we have in our brain, some people, most people with low arousal thresholds seem to be not, don't react very well. They, when they hear rain or, or all these other noises, it seems to 
wake them up. They don't provide that complex that dampens down the 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 um, to the thing to wake you up. So it these complexes are there to keep you asleep and dampen down that response. Now, some people don't have that response. They they lose it. And what we worked out is that there are certain noises that you can play in your ears at night at certain stages in your sleep that will train your brain to make these complexes bigger and more effective so they work again and therefore you don't keep getting woken up by it and so i've been testing myself i'll show you a picture of michael and i here i've been testing myself and trying to improve my sleep study, trying to improve my K complexes. I actually, I, I've had quite good breaks. I sleep very well. And I guess that's because as a doctor, a junior doctor, you get woken up all the night and people are walking past the ward and you're trying to get some sleep on a desk somewhere and you learn to sleep in, in weird places uh, and you can sleep through a noisy ward and you know all sorts of things like that. Um, but the idea is to try and train you to not be stressed by these simple noises that should not be waking you up. Obviously, our brains are designed to wake up if you heard a, a saber-toothed tiger growling or a screech of a pterodactyl. Obviously, not pterodactyl. That was 65 million years ago. But, um, but you know, stuff that could be a threatening noise. These are non-threatening noises that are still waking up people and training your brain to not be stressed by that. So I've been doing that to myself. Slowly, I've, I've got um, I've got some sounds that I play myself at night and slowly increase the volume and making my different complexes bigger and bigger and bigger so that I'm even less affected by um, things waking me up. Now, when I fall asleep, I fall asleep straight away and uh, and i wake up again i don't get um as much sleep as you know eight hours or whatever it is but i did notice by doing this little technique i seem to get slightly more sleep um i don't wake up naturally after whatever number of hours so i seem to lengthen my sleep but i wasn't sure what else it was doing for me um it may be because i don't have a pathological problem um we're testing it currently on uh, Michael's wife, who's just had a baby. This is this video is dedicated to little Ray, the the baby who's just been born. Um, hope you watch this one day if YouTube is still around. Um, and so, because she's likely going to have a problem with her sleep, uh, and she's going to have a problem for ages because the the baby's around. But with time, we want to reverse that if we can, if she'll let us, obviously. Um, so, and these these changes in your sleep can happen during puberty, during menopause, and all sorts of different parts of your life. Stress can do it, and all sorts of things can interfere with your ability to sleep. So, we're trying to train your sleep back again to normal. Um, and so, yeah, uh, that's been working very well. The thing we did notice, however, is that a couple of papers have come out showing that if you have certain types of complexes which are bigger and you can train them we think we can train them to get bigger now we found that uh, well this paper in uh, in nature the study showed that cognitively these people were um their cognitive ability was better the next day so i've been playing these ridiculous sort of reaction test games where you press the screen when the screen goes green or something like that and I, it wasn't any better for me i didn't seem to get any better I tried my maths ability, all sorts of other things, and it didn't seem to change much. My maths was still terrible. Um, but what did change, seemed to be changing, was my memory. So what we did was um, I got um, uh, ChatGPT to give me uh, 40 random uh, nouns, um, noun pairs. So it was river, planet, or picture car or you know 40 of those and the night before i would uh, read all of those before putting all these uh, monitors on and, and listening to these noises and then i would see how many i could remember the next morning so next morning uh, i'd get a random um set of 40 uh, words without its corresponding pair and i had to say okay so uh, planet goes with 
um, wall and and river goes with apples and all those other things and and i try and memorize you know up to um, repeat how many i can um, repeat back over those 40 actually 40 is quite easy um once i had done a few nights of this i got some of my pairs mixed up i was like oh i'm getting mixed up from the previous nights i'm remembering what i learned the first night where for some reason i, I remember a bridge made out of apples and um, a dog looking out of an aeroplane, you know, all those sorts of things. And you get mixed up between the different nights. So typically I was getting sort of 30 out of 40, 35 out of 40 or something. But once I've trained my brain with these noises and I had to move the, the, um, the volume up bit by bit, I had to increase the intensity of these noises as well. I'll explain that bit in a minute. Then... Once I got to, you know, about level two or three on my little scale of things, I noticed I could get to 40 each night pretty easily. It was quite simple. It's almost like it was a little clearer. I thought it might be just simply me sort of becoming better at memorizing these brace pairs. But then I just waited a month and then saw how I was. And maybe it's just practice again. But I've done it three times now, and it seems to be slightly better. I lose it after a month, um, and so I need to be sort of trained again. Uh, and whether it's because my complexes have got bigger or not, I'm not really sure. But it's exciting because it does help people with low arousal threshold, we think. Um, we're testing it out on people. Hopefully that will, that will help. But I think also it might help those people who don't really like, care about performance. You know, they want... If they're going to sleep, I want to get the best sleep ever, that sort of person. Um, and these people who take 100 vitamins a day, and we thought, well, actually, we could make this software and we could charge a pound a night or something like that. And fingers crossed, it will help people out there, but also help those people who want to get really good performance sleep and really have great memory the next day, all those sorts of things. Um, but like I said, another companies come in, um, I've forgotten what they're called, and they're doing a slightly different technique from us, um, uh, yeah, very different um, different way of doing it, but similar prob uh, similar sort of idea. And so we're not sure whether it's worth <laughs> doing it. The, our original plan was to have an app um, that you turn on at night when you wanted to train your brain and you would listen to sort of eight hours or whatever of uh, noise, whatever you, how much you slept for. Um, and that'd be on level one, not particularly intense, not many noises during the night. And then if you're on volume one and you didn't get woken up, go to volume two, volume three, up to whatever your thing goes up to, volume 10 or whatever. Um, and then if you completed level one in terms of intensity, you go up to the next level where more sounds throughout the night. And then we slowly increase the volume again. And so I've got 10 levels now and you go up. So it becomes really intense at the level 10, a noise every few milliseconds almost. And it's uh, there are gaps, obviously, because um, if you don't have gaps, it, it just becomes noise like on an aeroplane. It doesn't actually help you much. So we, we worked out the gaps that you need to have and when to play certain noises at different times of night. So it was all very interesting and exciting but i'm not sure if it's worth doing anymore um i think a whole bunch of companies have seen the same studies and are trying to uh, emulate it so um i've thrown it out there for you guys if you're interested in this or if you're some sort of software company that'd be willing to help us set it up um without us spending too much money um because it's really expensive to make an app these days then then let me know Otherwise, I thought it might be interesting for people out there. And maybe you can make your own at home and try and sort of create this thing. Um, I'm hoping one day it might be um, my, my little present to little Ray that uh, her dad gets loads of money and doesn't have to work so hard and those sorts of things. But um, it was a good idea. <laughs> well, I thought it was a good idea. I thought it'd be quite useful. I'll stop jabbering on now. You take care. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.